Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about a new short story that Brandon just released, um, surprisingly, at the end of the year of Sanderson, um, basically the Kickstarter campaign. He basically sent out an email saying, you know, this is the final month and everything, wrapping up the year of Sanderson, and as one last little secret, he basically gave us a short story. So this is a short story Brandon had apparently worked on years ago while still in school, but after some time, he still, you know, was very much attached to it, so he basically dusted it off and gave Gave it a nice revision and edited it and stuff and then released it in order to give it to us so i thought it was really really cool and a lot of fun so i kind of want to talk about it it's a short story very short but i have no real idea of if it'll be released like by itself as like a you know uh probably something on dragon steel or maybe like a short story at the end of stormlight 5 i have no idea about the general release order so right now to my knowledge it's only available to people who have backed the kickstarter for the year of sanderson so I'm not sure of that. You can, of course, correct me in the comments down below. But as of right now, I think it's exclusive to the Kickstarter backers. So yeah, with that being said, please make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's begin. So the story is called Long Chills in Case Doe. It's, pretty, uh, it's a pretty interesting title. I like the, um, so, uh, I'm sorry, I'm all, of course, very rambly, very typical of me, um, but I want to start off by saying that I think this is a good example of one of the things that I think Brandon does really well. He takes a lot of different ideas and a lot of tropes and a lot of different concepts, and he tries to integrate them into his writing regularly. He doesn't just, like, rest on his laurels and just continuously write the same way he does, you know, or the way he has written successful things or anything like that. He doesn't just, you know, rest on his laurels and continue to do the same thing. He's always pushing and always trying to do something different and add something to it. And apparently this has been consistent with him, like, for the majority of his life, at least his entire writing life. So he wrote this one in college, and um, basically it's a, um, a marriage of two contradicting ideas. Essentially, the setting in the world and stuff is hyper advanced. It's like the year 2150 or something like that. And everything is very hyper advanced. People have like endoskeleton enhancements and stuff to make themselves far more durable and far more better um, fighters and stuff. And like to the point where regular projectile guns are basically useless antiques because most everyone has enough enhancements in their body in order to make projectile weapons basically worthless. So we're in a very clear sci-fi futuristic world here. But our main protagonist, Dally, he is a like nostalgia nut for the 1920s and detective stuff, like all detective tropes. He is very much a fan of it. And he is essentially like living in that world while living in, you know, the hyper futuristic reality. So I think this could be a lot of fun and it can like mess up very easily. So to have this character that's so completely out of time, but they're, you know, not time displaced or anything. They're just someone who just has a love for this specific time period. So they obsessively lean into the tropes and, you know, all that kind of stuff of it. Like that could fall very flat on its face. That could um, create a very annoying character that refuses to basically face reality and stuff but of course Brandon recognizes that and therefore like subverts that where we have this character who is very nostalgic for like the 1920s and all the detective stuff as kind of a fanboy but he's not just you know a fan who's running around doing this kind of stuff he is an actual decorated detective from the police force so he has all the skill and knowledge to be able to do detective work but he just couldn't stand being inside the police system because he lives in a time where mobs have essentially made a huge resurgence in the world and mobs have basically taken over a lot of the you know organized crime and everything to the point where the police essentially says if it's a mob crime don't even pursue it so he's sending you know he's basically fed up with the corruption and stuff that goes on in the system so he basically you know takes inspiration from the 1920s detective stuff and just kind of cuts out as like a lone ranger and just wants to be you know single person going out to um, find justice and all that kind of stuff so it's this combination of this nostalgic almost childlike love for this period of time along with this sincere true desire for actual justice coupled with true actual skill in the area that he specializes in which makes it all work for me so it could be a very cringy thing like why is this guy talking like dick tracy and stuff like that like it could be very annoying like as it goes probably even in the longer story other than the short story it probably would have gotten annoying but i think it was just the exact right amount of time with this kind of character and there's also something that i noticed that brandon did um i assume it's probably because of how far 
far removed the character is from the initial time period. Um, but he basically speaks in like a um, 1920s detective kind of slang and, you know, all that kind of stuff. He speaks in that way, but he does it from the perspective of a fanboy. He's not fluent in it. So a lot of the turns of phrases he'll use he'll use repeatedly or they won't really work or they won't make a whole lot of sense and stuff. And then to a lot of the people around him, they just don't make any sense at all because contextually, a lot of the stuff you refer to, you know, using 1920s detective slang, like, wouldn't make any sense in 2150-something, you know? So it's just completely, like, out off the wall, you know, out of left field and stuff. So it's a really interesting contradiction that kind of creates this interesting little short story. I would have honestly liked more of the story um, because of some of the character nuance that we get from the main character. And I love this aversion that he has um, a secretary that he wants to just be, like, the cliche, you know, secretary and the 1920s detective office thing or whatever but she's actually like you know really into it and stuff and she really well not really into the detective stuff i mean into the 1920s detective dick tracy stuff but she's into the actual like mystery solving and the regular detective stuff so she eventually basically forces herself on him to um basically become his partner to help him solve this crime and stuff so it's a really really fun story and i really like the way it plays out and i like the way it ends to the point where i really would love a time display or a planet, you know, a world hopper Cosmere detective. But I don't see how we could tie it into like the Dick Tracy talk because I honestly have a bit of a nostalgia for that kind of stuff. Like in my mind, it's mostly stuff like Daffy Duck portraying Dick Tracy is that kind of thing. But I do have like a level of nostalgia love for the genre of this type of detective stuff. So if Brandon were to integrate these ideas into the Cosmere and do something like, say, Zellian's next uh, planet he um, jumps to or whatever, like he ends up like either it could be like a flip of it. Like the world is basically in a 1920s detective noir, but he's like this hyper advanced sci-fi person, you know, like you could play with it in a um, number of numerous different ways. <laughs> so I just really like the idea and I really like the concept and I really, really like that Brandon gave us this extra little surprise at the end of the year of Sanderson. It's a lot of fun, and I'm glad I liked it. It's a nice way to encapsulate the whole year. So I really enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below. If you have access to it, have you read it? What do you think of it? And in general, if you haven't read it and don't have access to it, if you've stuck around this video for this long, let me know in the comments down below. Do you like um, Detective Noir stories? Um, if you have any favorites, let me know about them in the comments down below. So as always, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And if you're interested, you can check out the Patreon for some TV show and movie reactions and some uncuts and some um, um, early access to a bunch of videos. So yeah, uh, I will talk to you all next time. Peace.